What's up Simonix? Welcome back to a new quick win that will be really quick today because we will focus on one part of the migration from Ionic 4 to Ionic 5 and that is about the events API. If you use the events API from Ionic in the past, you might have seen a deprecation warning uh, already. And today I will show you how you can easily migrate your code from version four to version five. There are really not a lot of changes, but this is one of the changes you have to go through if you're using this code. So I already prepared a little simple example. Let's take a look at this application. When I load this using Ionic 4, I will see a deprecation warning events. Events provider is deprecated and will be removed in the next major release, which is Ionic 5. And you should either use observables or use Redux, Redux, I'm not sure how to pronounce it once again, as an advanced state mention. And we will cover the first uh, idea here because we will use a basic example. So we have this application and I can increase account and decrease it, not really super special, but we're using a service and you can imagine like a wallet or a card or anything where you count your elements. And once you increase a product, uh, you might have changed the account inside your service. And whenever a change occurs in the service, you simply publish an event. That is how it worked with Ionic 4 or up until Ionic 4. Same for decreasing uh, the count. And this class basically publishes um, this, um, how would you call it, the topic, okay? and whatever event data you also want to publish. And then whatever page wants to subscribe to this can do it by using, again, the events API, subscribe to certain topics and then handle whenever a message comes through. And now let's see how we could change this code to work with the latest Ionic version. So therefore we will head over to the wallet service and where we previously had a private count of zero, we will now use a behavior subject. There are different types of subjects. Perhaps we can talk about this for a second. Um, I think this is also linked in the deprecation warning. No, actually something else anyway. But a subject is like an observable that can multicast to many observers. Um, there are different types of subjects. There's the regular subject and one type of subject that you see me using a lot is the behavior subject. So there are a lot of information about general subject and here are the different types. So the behavior subject basically has an initial value and will always emit the latest value only. So this is really great for just uh, sending out an update and everyone who's subscribed will get the latest value. Other types of subjects are the replay subject in which you can actually keep like a buffer of elements. So the subject would then have the little, uh, three last values and whenever someone subscribes to it, um, the latest three values will be emitted. So if a new value is uh, called onto the subject, it will basically drop the latest one and then use the uh, newer ones. Also, there's the async subject, which will um, keep the data internal, I would say. And only once complete is called on the async subject, the actual value will be uh, broadcasted to the subscribe function. So these are different types and we will use the behavior subject now. So as I said, we can initialize it using new behavior subject zero and importing it from RxJS. And within our increase product, Let's now change this to use um, or to first of all get the new value by simply calling this count get value, which will always give you the current value of this subject. And then of course we want to add one since we're increasing the product. Same procedure for decrease. Here we'll just reduce it by one and then we can get rid of everything related to events in here and instead simply call this count next which will emit a new value and we will just use the new value right here and we can do this in here again we could even keep this in like one function but i don't think we would actually have less lines because we'll have an if uh, maybe perhaps so um we can also still get the count but we would have to return get value just like we used in here. So this is um, 
immediately returning a number. We can add the typing here to make it clear. And if we want to use it in an events like fashion, um, we should get the count observable actually, because right now there's not a lot going on. And we can now change this one to be an observable and we come on. Sometimes this plugin is really ridiculous uh, anyway. So instead of returning the immediate value, we now uh, count as observable. Is there any explanation? Creates a new observable with this subject as the source. And we can now treat this like you do with any HTTP call. You can subscribe, you can map, you can pipe, whatever you want to do. And we can do this now within our homepage in which we will also get rid of everything related to events. Um, perhaps I will just comment this one out and we can basically still keep the increase function. So this will just increase the value in the wallet service or decrease the value in the wallet service. And what we need to do as well now is to subscribe to the observable and use get count as observable, subscribe, and then let's lock out new value, whatever it might be. And then update our local count to the result of this. There we go. Uh, right in here, we don't have information about uh, if it was increased or decreased. We could actually check if our value is bigger or uh, lower than the current value. But you could also simply call just in here your present toast or whatever. Perhaps you're not even doing anything. So that's just an example what you could append. Oops in here as well, uh, decreased. And now we can save everything. We don't have any reference to the events API anymore, not in our page, not in our service. So once the application loads, we see that the deprecation warning is gone and the same behavior like before still works. Whenever we increase the value in the wallet service, we're calling next on the behavior subject, which will then emit a new value. And since our page is subscribed to the observable of the subject, we're getting the new value. And this is the behavior uh, that you can easily implement in your Ionic 4 application to move to Ionic 5. Just get rid of the events and transfer the basic or simple stuff to this API. If you need a more advanced uh, system, of course, you can still uh, move into the Redux or Redux um, pattern, which becomes a lot more complicated. So switching over to observables and the subject is really done like in a few minutes, I think. Uh, the other logic uh, requires, um, I would say, at least half a day to actually get into this new architecture. If you want to see something on this topic, of course, let me know. I definitely plan to get into uh, advanced state management as well. So if you want to see it, leave a question or whatever you got right below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your app faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon.